Hello everybody, um, I wanted to thank everyone for uh, trying to take a look at this um, with me here. Um, so what we're going to do tonight, um, again, uh, there really isn't a lot of information out there. Um, essentially looking at, uh, you know, how to protect all the wildlife on the planet um, and also uh, how to work together uh, on this. Um, so... We're going to try to go through a ton of different maps here, um, and I spent a lot of time trying to look through all the details, um, and hopefully you'll find uh, some of these pretty interesting. Um, right here is the soil map uh, for South America, particularly the Amazon jungle, um, and I kind of wanted to um, compare that with other parts of Earth, um, which will hopefully help you out. Here is the kind of the topology <clears throat> of South America. Um, this map actually really is what got me started. Um, if you notice, you'll see um, quite some different areas uh, in South America that you might not have expected. Uh, kind of the height of the mountains in the backdrop here, the Amazon, um, as well as some different uh, river pathways that you might not have expected as well. So here we have the main Amazon, and then we have another river coming here through Venezuela, and then a third river kind of going down through Argentina, um, and then maybe even another river right here uh, coming uh, into the Amazon. And then here's kind of the geological map. So basically what I wanted to say is try to go through everything um, just so you can kind of get a bigger picture. Um, it does help to look at the entire planet, um, although we're going to try to look uh, primarily at the Amazon here. Um, so basically what we're looking for um, is kind of like the ways that the animals might actually move around in the jungle um, and certainly there's a whole different a bunch of topics on that um, so the mountain range and kind of the back end here the back door of the jungle um, really has a big factor um, in how the jungle works um, and then there's also some uh, river pathways that you might not expect particularly this one here um, and particularly on the south side uh, of the jungle uh, is kind of unexpected um, as well as down here, you'll see um, some kind of weird areas uh, kind of between the jungle um, and then the rest of uh, basically South America, particularly Paraguay and the rest of central Brazil. Um, and then here's kind of Manaus, which is the central city. You can kind of see uh, a kind of branches of the river. You kind of have a far south side, a middle channel, and then a northern channel um, here, as well as you can also see this mysterious road. Uh, going through the heart of the jungle um, and there's just so much to look at um, so many important details um, and I really wanted to emphasize the northern part especially because uh, Lake Maracibo, Colombia here and uh, basically part of Panama um, basically uh, you have mountains over here where you don't really have as many mountains as tall nearly um, you get into ice here whereas you don't get any ice um, mostly in the rest of the jungle here so and then there's this mysterious mountain range here kind of in the north um, and basically one of the most surprising things for me was kind of looking at uh, this uh, northern edge of the jungle let me get that on a map uh, so you can see what we're talking about here so um, so kind of the surprising part um, is actually on the northern side um, and we're going to move this map around a little bit so you can see uh, what's going on but basically the reason it's so surprising um, is because it basically gets into the Caribbean and all these islands as well as some very um, interesting areas let's turn the map so you might be more familiar with this kind of map here um, but basically um the part of the jungle that a lot of people don't realize is there's a separate part up here in the north, um, which is basically Venezuela, um, and then this whole other plate here, which is uh, Suriname, uh, French Guiana, and these three major cities here. So um, it's actually, um, there's actually kind of three sections of the jungle. So there's the north side, the south side, and then kind of the back door. And it all converges right here at the uh, where the Amazon heads into the um, ocean. So you can see um, there's definitely, what I try to do is highlight it based on the aquifers. 
Um, so if you're not familiar uh, with a lot of this kind of um, study of the planet, um, it may help rather than looking at the country borders, these are actually the aquifer borders. So um, the major uh, underground water, pretty much everywhere that you go around the planet, um, people are no longer getting the water from the surface. They actually dig a hole into the ground and get the water from underground, and that's basically an aquifer. So this region here, um, which we noticed on the relief map, um, definitely showed up here, and this is basically one aquifer here. And there's basically separate aquifers all in South America. It's a little bit easier to see that map on, her, on a horizontal view, so you can kind of see um, this separate area here down Paraguay. Um, and then going down to Argentina. Um, so these are the biggest aquifers. Um, and it's uh, the surprising thing is that there's so much water coming from the Amazon, it's many times more water than you get from the Mississippi or the Congo. Um, it's just a huge amount of water uh, in this basin here. So um, actually, uh, the water that we get um, in North America is probably more comparable to uh, these other aquifers here, um, these smaller ones. Um, so I try to also add some of the roads here. Um, but what I'm really trying to get at on these maps is how the animals uh, may depend on certain areas as well as people um, may also be interested in. So I'm sorry if I went through this kind of fast. Uh, I wanted to go through it fast first just so that people can like see all the details on a couple uh, key maps here um, just to see what overall I'm trying to explain in all these diagrams. Um, so uh, if there's any really one of these diagrams that you're mostly interested in, maybe let me know and I can try to explain uh, some of the more details. Um, but it was really the combination, um, just to slow down and take a step back, um, if you look at these maps here, um, you'll probably say uh, that this relief map really gives you a very clear picture of what's going on. Um, so I started by looking at these relief maps in detail, and then also looking at the river maps on top of that. Um, and then I also tried to look at the wildlife maps, so kind of seeing where the critical areas are on the planet um, for the wildlife. Um, and then the geology also helped me quite a bit uh, in understanding what was going on. Um, but this soil map really is what really started to um, highlight some of the super critical importance. So I'll change the, the opacity on this just so you can see. I'm actually trying to cook some dinner right now, um, so I may have to pause this a couple times. Um, but I tried to highlight it the best I could, but I can make it actually darker, and you can start to see, but the river, some of the river details start to go away. But I'm going to get a little bit darker just um, when we're discussing this. The images that I have posted um, are a little bit different um, than the ones that we're talking about right now. I'm going to work on some food for a second. I'll be right back. Okay, so I got a little bit of food here. Um, so you have to forgive me. I'm going to try to eat a little bit here um, while I work on this with you. So um, as I have some dinner here, what I want to say is, one of the most important factors is actually the farmland and you'll notice i included the farmland map on top of this so we can start to see some of those areas um and we really need to treat these areas as very different um, because it's an entirely different aquifer um, um that actually helps us understand quite a bit um, about what's going on in the farming on this side of the line versus that side of the line um although it looks like it's a continuous path these farmers here are also farming on this side. And Brazil definitely needs to think about that here as well as in Venezuela. So I also wanted to highlight there's several different kinds of, excuse me, kinds of soil maps. Um, so this is actually a soil map here. And this is a soil map here. Um, I turned them different directions and I wanted to look at them uh, differently because there's different different ideas of what the soil is definitely um originally this is the early soil map that i started to use and then i resorted over to this fao united nations map um but one thing i wanted to highlight 
is that these flood zones are very important as well as there's two different types of this uh, kind of orange brown dirt um, this type of dirt we don't see all over the world let me just show you <clears throat> the world map because um, it helps <clears throat> perhaps the only way to really understand the soil of the planet is to look at the whole picture and particularly compare it um, the Amazon <clears throat> with um, the Congo. So you can see there's kind of this light, um, lighter orange, which actually shows up in America. And it actually shows up along West Africa. And then there's a darker orange that pretty much shows up only here in Tsunami um, and French Guiana, as well as deep in the Congo. Um, <clears throat> so it actually shows up quite a bit south um, along the southern part of the Amazon as well as into, um, and then you see a flood zone here. You'll also see <clears throat> here a major flood zone in Bangladesh as well as in China. They're actually farming this whole entire area here. They farm it in Bangkok and they farm it <clears throat> certainly in Bangladesh. And you can also see in Europe, there's quite significant flood zones. We don't really see that in the United States, even down in Mississippi. You actually see pink dirt. This is very dark dirt. So this is very high. I mean, I'm from the Midwest, and this is black dirt. So we're basically talking about even higher quality dirt than what we see in the Midwest down here in Florida. And then we see even a further higher quality dirt, um, which is this dark stuff that we see in the Congo. And then we see the blue dirt, which is the highest quality dirt in the flood zones because that's actually just washed in from, you know, it could be animal everything is mixed into there and that's basically the highest quality dirt is in these blue zones so perhaps one of the most important decisions ever made in the jungle in the history of the jungle was manaus um it's actually quite a bit deeper um than what we see um anywhere else if i if i rotate this map sorry <laughs> i just wanted to compare this you see Kinshasa, um, there's another city in the Congo. It's not nearly as deep. It's basically about in here somewhere, or actually right in here. Um, I'm going to turn off these. Um, <clears throat> sorry about this. I'm kind of doing this really fast, but I'll keep it on. Uh, a lot of people want to see the country borders, but actually what we're using today is the aquifer borders, and it turns out the aquifer primarily is very close to the country borders, but not always. But it's important to realize that the, the Africans actually have a different philosophy um, in terms of what they're doing in the Congo jungle. They've actually heavily populated the back door of the jungle. Um, whereas in Brazil, they really haven't done that yet. There's still some places in Peru, Ecuador, and Bolivia that they're starting to get pretty deep into the jungle. Um, but basically what they did is they took Manaus, which is kind of in the center here, um, and made that into a major city. So um, that's quite centralized in the whole entire Amazon, whereas that doesn't really show up in the Congo. So it's a big mistake, you would say, here, but it's definitely a big difference um, between uh, what they're trying to do here in these two different areas. So... Uh, take a breath and look at everything um, and it really is hard to kind of understand um, the details um, so you know that, that's essentially why I tried to spend a lot of time uh, diagramming it all out but again you'll notice uh, this floodplain zone uh, it really helps to look at the river map and kind of compare that to the flood zones here <coughs> So Manaus happens to be right here, right at that edge. And basically, actually, it's maybe not exactly right there. So, um, <clears throat> But basically, it's it's in this region. Uh, and then you have these other floodplains um, that are kind of purplish, but you don't see the sediment um, that you see here. Um, one reason for that is this may be, it may be that the water moves so much faster because it's coming right out of the Andes Mountains. So here, the sediment has been pushed primarily into this region and you can even see sediment <coughs> further out here um, i've seen some scary photos of some of these rivers being completely empty 
Um, in the last five years, uh, there hasn't been even enough water. I think it's on one of these other channels, not the main Amazon, um, thank God. But uh, some of these other channels have been completely dried up. Um, and it's actually a very big deal um, to have one of these regions uh, completely dry up entirely. So I wanted to get you a little bit excited about what we've already talked about. Um, this diagram right here is perhaps the most important soil diagram. And in fact, there's only maybe one other <clears throat> soil diagram um, that's as good as that one, um, which is this one on the planet. Um, this is the World Reference Base Soil Group map. Um, and already what we've done, um, we're looking at the world's most important jungle um, with the Congo as well. Um, so anything that we do here um, is going to impact the entire planet um, and help a lot. Um, so all the understanding here, um, it is really fun. Um, I have traveled to Rio de Janeiro, um, which is down here. Um, and actually, <clears throat> what you'll see, let me load up a different map a moment here, um, is that in South America, if I load, load up the climate map, it turns out um, that the uh, climate... <clears throat> Sorry, it's taking a little bit while to load here. Sorry about that. So I had to change the opacity so you can see kind of the combined details of both of these maps. Sorry about this. It's just so much information, but um, it's um, really awesome to see this when you first see the map. Um, so what you see here is right along the coast of Rio, you actually get the same climate as the jungle. Um, with the same types of rain and a lot of things that are very similar. So if you do travel to um, this area, you don't necessarily even have to go into the jungle. They have monkeys here. Um, they have all kinds of things right along the coast here. Uh, so um, there are some opportunities to experience that, and you can even see in Central America, um, there's quite a lot of that as well. So don't worry about necessarily, I've never even been to the jungle, and yet I'm trying to study it here to see what to do about it. Now, it turns out that the combination of the geology and the soil, as well as climate, those factors all have to do with the, the biodiversity. So you really have to look at a um, combination of things in order to understand the biodiversity now you do have some of the hills in rio here <clears throat> that maybe you don't have in the in the amazon um that you do get once you get further back like you have in colombia and venezuela ecuador and peru um but <clears throat> you see the soil diversity really <clears throat> matters in certain areas um so actually although we need to protect this area the diversity of the soil actually shows up kind of in these pathways through here and through here and that's why <clears throat> some of my diagrams may look a little bit confusing um let me show you that in particular um so this one here i can start to highlight some of these zones right so you can see i circled this zone here and this zone here primarily because of the diversity in the soil that means you're going to have different types of life forms um and it's really important to look at that and so actually <clears throat> you get a lot of diversity um even further away from the Amazon jungle, right? Um, so that's because the climate, um, there's actually some weird parts of that jungle that we didn't really <clears throat> discuss on the map. You'll see these points here are actually really important along the back door here, as well as some habitat changes throughout here, right? And as well as right through there. So there's just so many different pathways that are super important um, to look at. I'm gonna go into about 40 other diagrams that I made uh, in a previous discussion uh, to hopefully help you um, see some even more details uh, in a moment. Sorry, there's just so much to look at here. Um, but I've actually, I traveled to Paraguay. It wasn't exactly the smartest decision. Um, it's perhaps one of the more dangerous countries in all of South America. Um, and um, certainly there was problems with the police and everything there. Um, they're walking around with coffins in the street. Um, but basically Paraguay holds the key um, to a lot of the farming uh, situation in South America. Um, it's hard to see on this map, but let me see if I can get a 
a regular Google Map on this. So basically, uh, the Amazon through here, uh, the real farming, <clears throat> bulk of the farming starts in South America. And actually, it's surprising how much is done in Argentina, uh, which is even further down here. So this pathway through here is actually vital. Um, and actually, Paraguay, you can see it starts to become checkered blocks, really heavily checkered. And there's actually quite a lot of farming going on even north here. Um, so some of the extreme uh, violations are actually happening in Peru mostly because this is not part of Brazil. It's actually part of Peru. And then Ecuador actually has a huge key here. Uh, and then Colombia goes very deep as well into the jungle. Um, Venezuela uh, actually does a whole different route, which is that other part. So when you look at these maps, you have to look at the aquifer maps. So you basically see that, yeah, Colombia actually has part of this aquifer and part of that aquifer, whereas Venezuela mostly has this aquifer. And the one thing after studying all this, it really made me realize how important this aquifer is. Um, as well as these aquifers right here in Brazil, right? So um, I'd never traveled up to Hasifi. Um, my African girlfriend wanted to take me up here um, and check it out. Um, it actually becomes much more African apparently up in here. Um, and actually it's very close. It's basically the same habitat as the jungle. Um, and there's another city called Belim um, and just a bunch of really important cities. And you can see the farming definitely um, goes quite pretty far here so a lot of the solution is actually going to be here uh in brazil as well as in colombia um so colombia has a different type of challenge because it's just a different environment um and i wish i could show that on a map i'll try to show in detail here so basically this is kind of like the back door but it's a mountain range so a lot of the people live on the west side of this mountain range and they have not really crossed over the mountain except for in certain categories and you'll see um, on some of these other maps, uh, I've basically shown <clears throat> where they've kind of crossed over in detail. Um, so you can see this farming map, you can see the farming back in here. Um, and if I zoom in here, you can start to see uh, some of this backdoor area here that they're actually crossed the aquifer and they're actually starting to farm on the deepest side. So the problem is, is that this is a very critical region and you can see a heavy amount of farming here because if you farm here, basically the pollution from that travels this is a thousand miles is like this far so this is actually a huge remember this is a continent and it's a major river traveling three thousand plus miles or more i, I um, don't have the exact number here but so one of the really fun things to think about um with this um so i'm actually trying to work on a movie uh related to um, the Amazon jungle, it's called uh, No Jungle Called God. Um, and it's basically about Bolivia. Um, believe it or not, my brother has traveled to Bolivia and he had an awesome experience. Um, if you're not familiar uh, with South America, basically Bolivia holds the key to this highest lake in the world. Um, it's this, this is La Paz here. Uh, but this is the highest lake in the world, and um, it's really a wonderful lake. Um, they also got some uh, white lakes up here um, where it's like it looks really amazing. Um, and basically, the, some of the some of the only problem is that you, they do get a lot of uh, eruptions in terms of uh, earthquakes and things like that. So it is very dangerous in terms of earthquakes. Um, but uh, basically, what has happened here? Um, is that a lot of people um, have populated uh, Colombia and Venezuela and Panama. Um, and basically there's two main sides to the jungle. There's basically this north side and then there's the south side, which is basically Sao Paulo and Rio and down here, Buenos Aires. Um, obviously, uh, the farming is very different. Uh, as you get further south, they actually do a lot of cattle. Um, and my neighbor actually... I'm a vegetarian, but they worked in farming in South America. And even though they were in North America, a lot of their meat came from Argentina. So you're traveling all the way from there, all the way to Chicago, believe it or not, and different parts of America just to get your meat um, from South America, which is unbelievable kind of distance to travel. 
I, I, I really don't know how they do that, but they've been doing that all their lives, um, and that's how they make their money. So, some other ways that you might be able to help out um, is actually I'm trying to get people away from the jungle and start thinking about other things. So, some of the largest uh, telescopes in the world uh, are actually down here in Chile, um, and that's because it's so dry in the atmosphere. And it's also the sky is very clear at night. Um, so they've invested heavily in these telescopes down there. Um, that's one thing that you may want to check out. Um, one of the crazy things is in French Guiana, um, where uh, I have to remember exactly, but up here, the European Space Agency has actually created a space launch facility. And this is actually one of the most important regions uh because of its different waterway it sees how green it is here we need to actually protect the coastal region um, because it's so close to the caribbean and this has actually all been populated so all of cuba is basically farmed uh haiti is entirely populated dominican republic isn't as populated as, as haiti but um, puerto rico as you know um, and then mexico is heavily populated so it's basically um a lot of people have moved uh, have moved into the Caribbean and these guys down in here kind of hold the key uh, to the clean water um, <clears throat> which is basically Trinidad right down here um, because this is where this major river dumps in so it's hard to see what I'm talking about unless you look at this map so let's let's see what I can do to um, sorry it's gonna go crazy on me here in a second and uh, let me zoom out so so basically this aquifer this aquifer right here, as you can see, there's a lot of heavy farming. And <clears throat> this actually, it's not that this is less important or more important. This actually dumps into the Caribbean, um, and a lot of the fish uh, can get quite sick. And you can see that the population, as well as the farming, is basically all up here. And actually, that affects the Caribbean uh, quite a bit. And you can see it's heavily farmed all throughout Cuba, Haiti, and uh, Dominican Republic, right? <clears throat> and then even in the United States. Um, you know, it's basically heavily farmed along the coast. So, but this isn't totally farmed yet. Um, part of that reason is because it's so hot here and it's so humid. People just didn't want to live there necessarily, but there are some new places there. Um, if you're interested in helping with uh, sustainability, it may be really interesting to work with the European Space Agency. I have a whole document on how to work with the European Space Agency down here in South America and work right at the Space Launch Facility on basically sustainable farming. Um, but it gets a little bit wild here in Colombia, um, safety-wise, and some other things. And you can see the aquifers get pretty complicated, uh, as well as this is a different aquifer because it's the mountain range here. Um, if you looked at the <coughs> relief map, which is, where is that relief map? Here it is. So you can see that it definitely is important to take a look at these mountain ranges and there's different aquifers so this whole thing is actually kind of spinning out even though this this river actually goes that way whereas all these other rivers go this way um and i'm working on a separate film and i hate to say it it's uh called white refugee um it's basically about the north amazon um and actually russians that are leaving russia uh and trying to go to a city called Macapa. Brazil um, so it's kind of a fictional story um, and I wanted it to be about helping the jungle um, so a lot of Russians are terrified of being Russian right now um, and there's actually so it's called white refugee and the story of it actually um, I won't get too much into the story um, I have the whole document written up about it but essentially they try to start up a grocery store a sustainable grocery store uh, with zero plastic waste, um, no animal products, and just a grocery store in in uh, on on the Amazon River right here at the at the end of the Amazon River, um, and then they actually get into a little bit of trouble and they decide to go further up the Amazon River and they actually get lost uh, because they decide not to bring their computers or cell phones, and they end up going north uh, rather than deep into the Amazon jungle. And they discover this whole north part of the jungle. Um, and it's the whole story of basically survival and trying to figure out how to be sustainable. 
um, and particularly work on clean water. So once they get into Venezuela, there's a whole separate story here. Um, you can read it. There's a city uh, right in here. I believe that this hopefully we can get this story um, done. Um, and we actually want to end it in Lake Mercibo right over here. So, um, But there's just a whole huge <clears throat> side of the jungle on the north side um, that definitely needs to be cleaned up because this is where most of the population is. And actually, I haven't even gone into the Peru side of this, but the deepest part of the jungle is actually run by Peru um, and they, and as well as Bolivia and uh, Ecuador, right? And a lot of that comes from banana farming, um, which they're actually doing right in along in here and here. And if you think about it, every major grocery store in the United States and pretty much around the world depends on these banana farms um, right in here. And this is a small area right now, but they're starting to uh, work deeper and deeper into the jungle um and i want to pause this for a second but i wanted to basically highlight some other interesting concepts that might not have been super visible on these diagrams um so you'll notice i did do uh some kind of matching here so we're talking about the amazon river going through here this is this river and this river here so what happened here in brazil is actually starting to happen has already before i mean it basically happened in colombia and venezuela and it's starting to happen in ecuador as well as peru um and along the coast here so there is an opportunity but the problem is this is all a national park right now uh which is great um so it's actually probably you get the world's most rain actually along this coast here i was really surprised uh to find that out um, but it's probably better to farm here than it is to farm deep in the jungle but there's a debate about that because um you know you start to pollute the ocean here um, when you drain out into the ocean here whereas this kind of takes a lot more time and sometimes the pollution gets trapped in the amazon it doesn't even make it all the way out because animals eat often will eat the garbage or trash um that does float down these rivers so it's just kind of a different story <coughs> so uh who is going to work on getting this situation resolved and so it's really split into several sections here right so as i highlighted this part of the north um i mean there's plenty of, plenty of places i mean you can um you know a lot of these places here along the coast um are super critical um and basically no one uh, very few people start to travel to some of these other places um which is fortunate so um, but once you get along the coast here of Brazil, um, these areas are actually really vital. So let me see if I got some more diagrams um, <coughs> to show about that. So here you can start to see basically the whole entire coast of Brazil all the way down to Argentina. This has kind of become one continuous coast. Um, there's basically major roads that you can now drive um, and even a train system that goes along the coast here. Um, and actually, that's probably going to happen pretty much along uh, Ecuador, Peru, and Bolivia, and even down to Chile, right? Um, so this becomes really vital to clean up the water here as well as on the north side. Um, and you can see some of those details there. So I'm going to take a break for a little while here. Um, and hopefully, if there's any kind of questions, I'm going to... Um, just like pause this for a while. Uh, I'll try to come back to the discussion a little bit later. <clears throat> so I'm gonna close this by kind of zooming out and looking at the bigger picture of what's going on here. Um, so you can see basically the equator really holds the key to a lot of the wildlife. Um, <clears throat> and that means everything down here in Florida, Mexico, Central America, <clears throat> basically down Rio, Brazil, all in Central Africa, West Africa, particularly in West Africa. Um, some of these questions are actually the population and the farming situation is actually most critical right in this region in West Africa, at least for the land-based stuff. India at one point did have a lot of uh, perhaps more wildlife than China. Well, definitely had more wildlife than China. Um, but today... The story has changed massively. Um, and then you can see uh, right here, uh, basically, 
all in Oceania, um, which is basically very similar to what we should see in the Caribbean. Um, but actually the Caribbean, um, because this is the equator right here, the Caribbean is actually kind of just north of that line here. So actually what happens is that <clears throat> um, just slightly south and just slightly north of that equator. But basically <clears throat> Sumatra is huge. Uh, Borneo is huge. Um, and then certainly this <laughs> Papua New Guinea and this whole ocean area all these islands it's really surprising how much the philippines has completely um devastated i thought it was just indonesia uh but really the philippines is very much responsible for <coughs> essentially populating all these islands i think they do a lot of complaining um about colonization but really they have colonized every single island um essentially it's you know, there's a lot of Filipinos in this a Asians essentially, so it's almost all Asians except for once you get out to Papua New Guinea, gets to be a little bit darker skin color, um, and then even Australia uh, along the coast here, and then northern Australia <coughs> definitely <coughs> has a lot to think about. Um, and you're noticing that we're looking at the topological map here, um, so I'm going to zoom out <coughs> and show you the whole world's. Um, kind of the soil map for the planet and hopefully that will help you out i'm gonna actually change this to a 2d map here so we'll change to a 2d map hopefully that will be a little bit easier to see it does take a little while to load unfortunately um but here you're starting to see all the aquifers as well as the soil um now on the soil map the thing that really surprised me is really how important uh east africa is so it's not really called Central Africa. They basically divide it up into West Africa, <coughs> Central Africa, and then East Africa. It's really surprising uh, just the discussion in East Africa. Although it's not the same type of soil here, there's actually quite a variety of soil, particularly in Zambia down here. I was really surprised. I thought originally when I started studying this, I looked at Tanzania, and then I also looked at Madagascar. Um, but really, all of East Africa... Um, is super important because of the diversity in soil and climate. Um, it's more pure jungle, um, you know, all year round uh, in the Congo. Um, but actually, <clears throat> with the mountain ranges and different things. And there's also a separate piece right in here um, that really needs to be looked at carefully. So uh, if you look at <clears throat> if you look at this map here, you'll notice um, basically. This front end of this West African part is actually not very, there's not a lot of people. It's actually a lot of forests still. Um, that really needs to be cautiously looked at, um, as well as Nigeria here, because the population is expanding so fast um, in Nigeria. Um, so that whole area, um, it's just hard to uh, uh, imagine how important it is. So, sorry, I'm trying to move this around a little bit differently um so basically this this whole area and then see the the diversity here so you actually have to combine a couple of these different maps um and then it's just not even it's beyond important uh looking at southeast asia just all these islands because you're actually talking about the fish as well so here you can see india on western india and sri lanka and particularly myanmar so it's hard to explain but myanmar actually and, and also, even in here, there's a lot of fishing going off the coast. There's just so many different areas. Um, <clears throat> and even uh, Hong Kong, because it's part of China, um, really has to start. And then Hunan, you can see Hunan Island basically having some of that same climate that they have all throughout here. So China actually can play a huge factor through Hunan Island um, on things. And you can see um, here back in Sri Lanka. So... Uh, but hopefully this gives you a full perspective of the entire planet. Um, here you have all the aquifers in the United States. Um, you know, basically we have uh, some of that same dirt that you see along the Mississippi River here, um, further south. Oh, wow, this thing's just moving, not moving at all. So there's just so much information here that's not even moving. Um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna show you the full topological map here uh, in 2D for the planet, <clears throat> and you can start to see. I also loaded up the roads on here because I wanted to study <laughs> precisely which roads are going deep into the jungle. You have to actually zoom in to see, um, but you can see <clears throat> these are major highways. Um, certainly China has uh, put a lot of major highways in their map, uh, but 
it's actually the secondary roads as you move it, zoom in that you can start to see. This is not even including railroads. This is just highways. Um, so, uh, but it does give you some perspective of what's going on. Um, the relief map as you zoom out kind of shows you the better image here. So, um, but it's very helpful to see. Uh, so I, I didn't really want to do this uh, right now, but I'm going to go ahead and do this. Um, what I'm going to do is load up um, <clears throat> a whole another conversation that I've already had. This is something like 40 images. I really shouldn't be combining uh, all this. It's probably going to ask me to convert all these images. I'll pause this here. Uh, so I'm going to go through all these images. I just loaded up like 40 some other images on topics uh, directly related to the Amazon uh, and some other things you should know about. Here's a picture of a guy who actually went across the entire Amazon. Uh, he floated down the Amazon. He walked down the Amazon. It was a pretty incredible uh, story. Um, uh one thing I wanted to mention is also the wind. There's not a whole lot of wind in the jungle, and this also happens in the Congo, also happens all throughout Southeast Asia, and then particularly, so some of the most basically biodiverse regions, for some reason, don't have much wind. On the poles, you start to have more wind. Um, you can see heaviest wind regions. Um, so a lot of that has to do with, um, you know, the, the animals just like to stay in certain areas. Um, they're not... Uh, actually moving around as much as you might think um, this is the Copenhagen climate classification map I definitely use this heavily uh, in a lot of my studies you can see I'm trying to see here um, how to essentially link different parts of the world together um, you can see there's quite a huge discussion on that topic uh, because the climate is identical in some of these regions and yet the, the, the types of wildlife that you have can be very different um, here you can see kind of a comparison talked about that front part of the con of the west africa you can kind of see that map here uh, and then kind of comparing uh, some of these spots um, so you have this kind of area in nigeria um, and cameroon uh, and then actually even comparing that to some other areas and then kind of the back door actually of this part of the jungle actually being similar to this part over here um, but it's just really really is debatable a lot of these concepts so uh, and again, looking at how this all kind of goes around the coast here, um, and then basically the fish, you know, the fish can eat a lot of that dirt and sediment and even pollution they eat um, may actually be a lot of the problem for some of the uh, uh, diseases may actually travel by ocean uh, more than we realize. Um, so here you can kind of see some more details. Um, and then here is a really awesome image because you can kind of compare uh, the the, the <laughs> Amazon jungle with the Congo jungle. And you look at the biodiversity here and you kind of see that on a map. Um, I kind of really kept the colors really bright there. Here, I went through and studied all the species richness. You should definitely take a look at this, the red list, if you have time. Uh, diagramming this out really helps you start understanding uh, how the entire uh, planet works in terms of all the biodiversity. Um, these, the one thing I would say is that just because it's red here doesn't mean India probably should be entirely all red. Um, it just, they've completely destroyed the environment here as well as the Caribbean. This should all be red. All of this should be red. But, um, you know, there's been population problems and things. So just because the map looks this way doesn't mean this is the, where the biodiversity is. It's not where it necessarily should be. Um, here is probably a better map. You should see it should probably be all red, um, meaning that all these areas are very vital um, for the biodiversity. Um, and I would actually use this map over this map because it actually should look like this, um, much more red. Um, so, uh, and then here I also had so many other details because remember this is pre-studied. So before the study that we just looked at, I did all this other work. Um, there's going to be 40 or so of these images that you're going to see here. This is looking at the electricity in the jungle, and you can kind of see which cities and which areas, how the electricity is getting in. And Peru is no joke uh, what they're doing here, uh, as well as Colombia in certain routes. You can see this is definitely getting quite deep into the jungle. When you have electricity, then you're going to start to have lots of people in those routes. And you can kind of see we did discuss this a little bit, but I wanted to show this picture in particular because it shows how important Bolivia is 
and Peru. Actually, this whole area down in through here and even right into here, um, we need to protect these zones particularly um, because it's so, remember, all of Florida is basically very biodiverse and it's only pink. We're talking about a red zone and then a really bright red zone. You see Florida has a little bit of that red, um, but basically, um, you know, the biodiversity, it's actually a lot of green in most of Florida um, and it's pretty swampy. So the kind of biodiversity that we're talking about here is many factors more um and you'll look on this map you'll see no biodiversity here in florida compared to what we see even in rio de janeiro you can see this is the thing i was talking about before it's actually very important that we protect this area as well as west africa this should be much brighter the reason is, is this is all populated this probably should be very bright red as well as all india and certainly right in here in you know i didn't even circle it but Thailand um, has farmed out everything there and they've pretty much taken away all the wildlife. Um, you can see this is desert and pretty much all of North America is pretty much has nothing in terms of wildlife. In one of these red spots has about 1,200 and some odd different species. That's just one little red dot there. Um, and it just doesn't explain how important all this what east africa is this at one point in time this whole area would have been much brighter so it's really important to look at the outliers here particularly in zambia there's some small lakes in here so much to discuss on this map here i really love this project and it really should be expanded many times more great detail um to look at um so we looked at all these electrical lines here um, and then these pathways. So a lot of this doesn't even begin to explain how important uh, this whole area is. Remember, they've, they've kind of made it into a national park. Once you get into here, this pink zone, they've actually farmed this pretty heavily. So that becomes pretty farmable. Um, but this is the front side of the jungle, which we talked about, which definitely needs to be protected um, because it's right along the coast here, um, as well as some particular parts right into here. So, and you can see right in here, um, Nicaragua, and uh, Honduras and some other places uh, and then heading into Mexico uh, they'll probably completely farm out this whole region at some point which is the Yucatan Peninsula um, and it's actually probably better for them to farm here than it would be certainly for Peruvians to start farming become banana farmers right in here um, so that's a concern and then here's all the airports you can see there's just tons of airports deep in the jungle didn't want to go into all the details. And then here you can kind of see uh, I described details about how these river system works and how eventually um, all these little towns uh, end up polluting some of the rivers. Here you can see some of the pathways from city to city. You can see we actually have gone quite deep into the jungle um, and actually made full pathways all across the jungle. And you can see that pretty clearly at the earth at night. Here's more population studies. You can see some of the central cities actually here in northern brazil right along the coast these guys all need to take responsibility for the jungle and that's probably what brasilia needs to do immediately is to get these guys heavily involved um the problem is getting involved doesn't mean going into the jungle it actually means cleaning up the situation right here and if you looked at some of my other diagrams you can see that um this is fires deep in the jungle so you can also use this to kind of trace where people are going into the jungle and then the deforestation maps really help a lot um and i just wanted to show all this although i already discussed this pretty much um before and uh, and then again here's some of these other pathways you can see there's kind of these zones here right along this coast where they're actually farming deep into this here um but actually that's some of the most protected areas are right at this border region because you have two different types of animals meeting and you need to be very cautious about what you're doing in those regions here is more of that farming in the south part of the jungle um and then you can see this is the back door and actually just because it's all red here doesn't mean it actually is very important to protect these biodiverse regions which is actually right in here here and here um which actually has all these habitats right you have mountain species you have different types of geology different types of dirt everything all becomes super important particularly in colombia uh and then i just highlighted some more details here and we're still not done and i'm sorry there's so many other uh, diagrams here. I'm going to try to go through all of these uh, in detail here. So again, this is more sediment diagrams that we didn't really get into, but I talked about pathways here uh, in all those sediment diagrams. Um, and then more of this stuff. This is Manaus right here, and you can just see how important it is because it's such a centralized point. It's basically about halfway uh, on either side of the jungle here. And having a major city like Manaus right in the center um, really affects things significantly. 
And then this is all the river maps, and you kind of divide that up into certain points along the river so you can see um, certain areas uh, that are very critical. And then you can also see the uh, aquifers here on this map, which is a little bit harder to see because it's so detailed in so many stuff. And then here's kind of more of that uh, soil-based diagrams. <coughs> and then basically the frontal area here is super important. It's even darker green than you see along here. Some of the reason is because you actually get more rain along the coast because when it hits the coast, that's right. It almost rains every single morning along the coast there. So that is a very important area. And you can see here um, that being super critical uh, to protect because there's actually not a lot of people living up there already. So more of that electrical diagram and then even looking at West Africa, how that's related. And then some of the mountain ranges perspectives that we need to carefully consider. I wanted to consider this compared to Africa, um, but it's really a totally different thing entirely. Um, this is some of the uh, declination changes. I wanted to look carefully at how the electromagnetic fields work uh, in the jungle. And so I kind of looked at that uh, and you can compare that. Um, actually, actually surprising to see off the coast of East Africa here, you can see kind of some coastal stuff uh, that you might not quite anticipate. And then here's the basins. If you're looking at just needed a map just to the basins and then all that farming going on in the south side. Basically, I wanted a detailed diagram to see everything for so people could really carefully look at that. And I'm sorry, there's so much stuff here. Um, I just wanted to give a whirlwind tour of everything so people can see. And you can see this is more of that stuff basically heading all the way to Brasilia and then heading all the way deep in the jungle. And it definitely needs to look at Bolivia. This some of those really important biodiverse regions that I mentioned need to be carefully looked at. Those are the spots right in here, particularly right there for Bolivia to look at carefully about preserving that. And then even on this side right here, there's another pocket there that really needs to be carefully thought about. Um, and hopefully I can finish this soon. I'm sorry, there's so much information. And then some of these other weird pathways that you can see um, how the animals may actually move uh, on the geological front. And then just some of the airport traffic, a lot of that really is coming out of Sao Paulo and then heading over to Europe, as well as in Central America. You can see Panama really heavily, a lot of airplane traffic um, to definitely study and look at. And then here's the other perspective of that same map, the geology, you can kind of see this weird shape uh, forming with these pockets um, actually that you might not have really seen. More deforestation map. More farming deep in the jungle. I looked at every single, I try to look as much as I could, but this is something you should definitely look at. If you have a chance to get the population map, you can start to see how these actually get pretty far deep into the jungle and how one city is basically connected to another. So this is going all the way to Lima and then how Lima starts to get into the jungle and how that may, how these cities are maybe all interconnected. Parts of the north part of the jungle. So you know, here you see both population and farming. So you start to see this particular pathway and this particular pathway with the population and even really deep into the jungle right there. And then this goes all the way up to Central America. And I'm really sorry about all this, but I'm trying to get everyone through everything really quickly here. But Central America, and then you can see a heavy farming all throughout here. This has actually polluted the water so much that there's almost no fishing being done in the Caribbean, which is really sad to think about. Um, and then here's banana. This is looking at particularly the uh, Ecuador, because a lot of the bananas do come from Ecuador, you can kind of see how this particular city here, Quinto, is actually very close to the jungle and actually very much responsible for going right into the jungle. And this is more banana farming areas. And then looking at how this all, you start to do banana farming here and then eventually heads all the way out into the jungle. And this is the deepest part of the jungle now. And you can even see another spot right in there. Um, so uh, basically more of this and you can see massive deforestation um, on some of these areas with the city and then you can basically see trace it right down to who is doing what they basically just float right down the river and then this is also into Colombia area so uh, further uh, more parts of these big major parts this should be entirely not farmed but there's already quite a lot of farming going on and this is uh, Suriname, Guyana and all that so or Quinto, Ecuador, um, and just also details along that northern farming front. And you can see, even though it looks like on a map that they're not going very deep, it's actually quite deep into the jungle right through this way from Georgetown. Um, 
it's just so many more details here to talk about. Um, hopefully, you can pause this, maybe come back to any of these details and look at the maps in detail um, that we've discussed. So, uh, and then here is Bogota, basically one of the biggest cities in all of South America, very much on both sides of the mountain range. And then you can see this basically has deep. This is the deepest part of the jungle. Um, these cities through here. So uh, it's definitely no joke. And Peru is heavily responsible for this city in particular. Um, you can see the highways are actually, they have major highways now deep in the jungle as well. So here's tracing it Manaus. So you can basically trace the problem from Manaus all the way to Bogota and then from Manaus all the way up to here, which is basically uh, Venezuela and then back here to Quinto, Ecuador. Um, and that one is a pretty important map to look at, actually. Um, so we're still not done. Sorry about this. Um, I'm trying to go through as fast as possible, but we almost got everything here. So again, here's the north side of the jungle. Um, more of those electrodynamic diagrams. Um, this is just a declination field map, and you can kind of see uh, where this, where the compass does work, and it actually works quite well uh, through both the Caribbean here and you can see it through most of Southeast Asia. There's a weird twist in that as well. Here's a river diagram in case you needed it. More of that jungle farming on the north side. More electrodynamic changes, um, inclination changes. I thought this was particularly helpful. Uh, you can see uh, particularly this bias towards uh, Belim and some other places that you might not anticipate just south of actually where the Amazon does empty and you can see actually a similar connection here with other parts of the world um, and the tip of India as well as getting down in here to the Strait of Malacca and uh, Singapore and so there's just so many details on that one map right there this is the global farming map and you can kind of see uh, overall what's going on and I kind of showed how this is actually changing um, and this is really bad sign right here uh, and you can see how each one of these areas are actually encroaching into the jungle and actually West Africa is heavily responsible through Nigeria basically being the door here and even getting out from India you can see India almost entirely farmed out so that's a huge question there and India actually needs to take responsibility uh, particularly through Bangladesh uh, for what's going on in Sumatra as well as in uh, the rest of southeast asia um, and not to mention australia to definitely take a look at that carefully that's a pretty awesome map to look at um and um here again is some more details on this so i'm really sorry there's so much information here um uh i'm gonna so that's just about it um here's the pathway that this guy walked through the amazon more deep jungle farming details uh, i carefully looked at some of these roads and looked at detailed cities about how these roads go deep into the jungle. So this is getting into the red parts of the jungle. Um, this particular road um, should certainly be carefully, it's called 5N, um, and you can see Bolivia actually being heavily involved right in here because this is this part that we definitely need to protect as well as over here. And I looked at some of those, uh, and this is a road that's basically running right through the deepest part of the jungle. Um, we definitely need to be uh, thoughtful about these roads in here. Um, and it just, actually, this is perhaps the details if you really wanted to start uh, looking into all the details about particular cities um, that are deep in the jungle um, and that also have a lot of earthquakes. And there's just certain, certain zones here in Colombia uh, that you should definitely look at. And I made this document called The World's Worst Farms. Uh, and then here is kind of the last perspective, looking at deep Amazon jungle and comparing that to the deep Congo jungle. Um, and overall, looking at the wildlife. Um, so I just wanted to thank everybody uh, for helping out to look at this. This is the whole entire Earth. This is what we're starting to do on the planet. Um, and um, I'm glad to actually close it on this diagram. Um, it's a helpful diagram to look at. And I hope it's been fun and interesting for you. I'll be right back in a moment to kind of close this all up. So yeah, I just wanted to thank everybody. We just gone through so much information. Um, this is probably the most detailed study ever done combining all these factors. Um, there's so many maps that we just did. I mean, we went through hundreds of different maps. Um, just just so much information. It's really unbelievable how much information we have. Um, you're actually completely able to start working on some really awesome stuff, no matter where you live. If you live in the United States, South America, Africa, Europe, 
India, China, Australia, Southeast Asia, wherever you are on this map, um, we are. This basically shows how we're all connected and how we all have a major influence on what is going to happen to the future of the entire planet. Um, it's really exciting uh, to start to work on this. Uh, I've come up with all kinds of really small projects and other projects related to these studies. So as I study this, I definitely have tried to come up with other ideas to help. I've friended people, talked with people, and started to begin uh, basically what will become perhaps some of the most exciting parts of the rest of my life, um, helping out. Um, with the animals. I have a little squirrel now, pet squirrel that lives outside. I have a couple cats that come over and visit me and drink my clean water that I put outside for them. Um, it's been really exciting uh, just to see uh, all the animals and to kind of speak uh, about these questions about what we need to do. Um, this map, the really other exciting thing is you're never going to waste your time looking at this entire map. This is the tap entire map of our entire planet. You know, this is going to be it for her. We don't have any planet B. There's no other Earth that we're going to make it to anytime soon. Um, so studying this definitely will help you forever. And it will help everyone for hundreds of years or even thousands of years um, protecting these areas. Um, these are going to be the, the, the Amazon is going to be the Amazon. It's not going to suddenly change uh, to a different part of the planet. Um, so we really need to protect all these areas that we've looked at really carefully. Um, you know, there has been some serious problems. Um, we've lost lots of fish. Um, and definitely we've looked at the land question. Uh, these blue areas we definitely need to consider very carefully because this is the water zones that we really need to care a lot about as well. So thank you so much for taking a look at this. Uh, please try to contact me if you're going to work on any kind of project. I'm so interested in trying to help out others and work with others. Thank you so much. See you soon.